The next thing we want to do is after the inspection is finished, we want to be able to get the information to the service advisor so they can begin the estimation process and the technician can continue doing what they're doing on that vehicle. So to do that, what we're going to do is switch over to a live tablet here in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to mark the job finished by tapping on the 100% complete. At that point, we're also going to use a smart chat bubble above to actually submit this to the service advisor. So I'm going to switch over to live shop. And I'm going to bring my tablet up. And I'm going to walk through that procedure. So the first thing we want to do is actually switch over to the repair order. And to do that, what we're going to do is tap on the work order button. It's going to return to the repair order. And then what we want to do is we want to find the labor line for the inspection. We want to mark it 100% complete. And then before I do that, what I want to do is actually make sure that I draw your attention to this yellow area above. I'm going to tap on the smart chat bubble right here, and we're going to send a snapshot of everything to the service advisor so they can begin their job. You can see as soon as I tap that button, the service rider has their information and the repair order is still open, ready for the technician to go about their job. Let me drag this out of the way a little bit. The next thing we want to do is talk about the best way for a service advisor to go over an inspection result when it comes in. And again, after a technician submits it on their tablet, we don't want them to go back and make any editing on the inspection part of the repair order unless they're explicitly asked to do so by the service advisor. So in this case, I'm going to come up to where it says the link is. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to open the inspection results. And what I'm going to see is the labor line that the service rider was given the smart chat bubble from is going to be highlighted in yellow. So if there was a whole line of labor items on the repair order and the technician used the smart chat bubble in the notes from any of these lines, it's going to highlight that line in yellow. So the great thing about that is if there's 20 repair order lines on the tablet and the technician makes a note and then presses the smart chat bubble on it. Let's say they needed a plenum gasket when they're doing smart spark plugs. When the technician clicks on that message, they can just scroll down through it until they get the message that's highlighted in yellow and they know exactly where the part change needs to be entered. But in this case, we're going to move over to the inspection reports. And what we want to do is actually see here that um, our technician and service advisor have created what we didn't want them to do, which is a revision. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the revision that I want to work with. When the inspection results come in from the technician, we want the service rider to quickly scroll through them and make sure they comply with all the things that they should be doing in the shop. Are all the topics marked, are all the pictures in place, and so on. If they aren't, then what we want to do is use the reassign inspection, and we want to click the OK and send it back to the technician. I'm just going to press Cancel here. And anytime you send something back to the technician, make sure you let them know what they need so that you don't have to have any additional communication. So in this case, I'm going to press the Smart Chat bubble, and I'm going to send a note back to the technician that I need tire tread photos. We're going to say that this is something the technician forgot. On the tablet, what's going to happen is when that goes back to the technician, You're going to see it start flashing in red, and if the technician has got the tablet open and they see it, great. If not, what they're going to do is shortly thereafter, they're going to get the audible alert. And in this case, I'm just going to press dismiss, and I'm going to move the tablet out of the way. So the next thing we want to do is we want to say that, look, everything on here is in order. So now what we want to do is we want to freeze this so nothing that's added to the repair order is going to show up on the technician's tablet. The most efficient way to do that when you're in a technician view is go up to the top right-hand corner of the tile, click the drop-down, and move it to creating estimate. This is the lock position, and I'm going to press OK. And then I'll pause just for a few seconds to make sure that you have yours in the lock position before we go further. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually move over and do a little bit of editing on this to make this inspection result very impactful to the customer. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab one of these pictures. I'm going to hover over until it turns to hand and I'm going to click on it and open it up. And you can see that in this case, I went ahead and grabbed a just a picture of anything. But what I wanted to point out is additional, initially, this is actually turned off where the customer can't see it. I'm going to click on the blue eyeball and turn it on. I'm going to hover over the text. It looks like it's almost in good shape. I'm going to click the T for the text button. And again, I'd like to remind you that any text that the technician sends to the service writer can't be edited by the service advisor, and it's going to have a date and time stamp on it. But the great thing is if the technician and service writer work together, the service writer, all they have to do is hit the copy button. And in this case, they might only have to make a, a very quick change in this area. And then click apply. They can also actually crop an image to bring attention to exactly where they want them to look. Press apply. They can also add some circles and arrows to it to be a little bit more impactful and also change the colors of them. So I'm going to start out by putting a green arrow right here and I'm going to move it around and I'm actually going to go ahead and point it to this car and I'm going to point it right to the name plaque where this car has some soul. And again, experiment with the arrows and add a couple of different ones there, maybe a circle to change the colors and so on so that you get just used to using the tools that we have and then press apply. If the picture comes in upside down, this one can actually rotate it in whatever direction. We don't ever want to show a customer an image on their cell phone or any device that's sideways or upside down, especially when we have the tools to put it in the right orientation. And I'm just going to click apply. You can see here that I'm on the topic of engine cranking and starter tests, I'm going to press the arrow over. And we can see that I'm still in the same area and I've already got an arrow here by the technician. So I might just decide to turn that off because I like my version better. Press next. And when I press next, let's see what happens. And now you can see I'm going through and I'm actually have the ability to edit all the images on a inspection sheet all at the same time. So in this case, I'm going to leave this picture turned off. My technician normally does a pretty good job with notes. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, yep. We got the good notes already pointing here. I've already got an arrow on it. I might want to actually crop it a little bit and get it a little bit closer. Press apply. But again, you can see how quickly you can go through and turn photos on and off and actually help the service advisor get the customer to understand exactly what's going on. And I'm going to hit save and close. The next thing I'd like to point out is as you do your editing here, there's some icons here that pop up. This red one means that there's only internal notes. This yellow one means there's both internal and customer facing notes. White X always means this is turned off where it's not going to show to customer. And the white exclamation point means that there's only customer facing notes. So this is a great visual to see what's going on. I also want to move down in here and talk about using the edit pencil on the line itself. And to do that, I'm going to click it once. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at the information here. And I'm going to grab this out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and press the copy over button. And now you can see why the notes were in that specific order. This is what it needs. This is the parts list. This is all stuff that's good to expose to the customer. And I always recommend to put the labor time last because the service writer can easily cut it out without having to retype or search through the whole paragraph and then click OK. So I'm going to pause at this point and let you go through and do some editing on yours. And then we'll carry on from there.